Hi everybody, I'm Val Mosier. I'm one of the STEM specialists at Roper Mountain Science Center and today we're going to be um, doing the activity that you can do at home. It's a slightly modified version of our water cycle in the bag. Now water is super important and water is found everywhere on our planet and when we talk about the water cycle um, we talk about how water flows or moves um, within our atmosphere around the planet. Um, now guys think about places where you find water. Can you think of any? How about big bodies of water? Maybe you thought of oceans, maybe you thought of lakes, rivers, streams. Um, there's also water in the ice caps stored in the polar regions of the, of the planet. Um, how about anywhere else? How about in our soil or in our ground or underneath us in the groundwater? Um, in plants and trees and in you and me. So let's talk about um, how all that works and kind of moves around in our world. Now water exists in three states, solids, liquids, and gases, and we're going to, in this sort of modified version of the water cycle, we're going to explore all three to help us make our water cycle go a little faster. If you've ever done this before, then you know you have to kind of give it a day or so or give it a bit of time um, in a window to see it kind of work. This one, as long as we're in a sunny spot, we can start to see some changes um, in about 20 minutes inside of our bag. Okay guys. Let's start making our water cycle in the bag. Now we're gonna need a water line down here for our liquid water. Um, and I'm gonna show a little spot over here for the land, okay? And um, our water cycle changes states of matter as it moves through the cycle. We need something that heats it up. The sun gives us our heat. So that heat energy is what heats up our water and it changes it from a liquid to something else. Those molecules start moving around really fast and it changes from a liquid to a gas. And that process is called evaporation. So as that water vapor starts moving upwards, the molecules are moving around, it's a little bit they become a little bit less dense and they start to move upwards, they hit a cooler spot in the atmosphere. And that gaseous or vapor water then starts to cool down and those molecules get closer together and they become a liquid. And we know them as clouds. So they start to kind of stick together, they attach to some dust particles and they form clouds. And when water changes back from a gas to a liquid, we call that condensation. Okay, so we have part of our water cycle. Now, the liquid stays up here and there's some ice in our clouds as well. And eventually though, those liquid droplets become so large they start to stick together and I'm going to make my cloud a little bit bigger, and they start to fall. And we know that as precipitation. And so this cycle continues. Again, I'm going to write the word precipitation here. And this cycle continues over and over again. As it we add heat, we go from a liquid to a gas, and as we cool it down to remove heat, we start to change back into a liquid again. Um, now, what I want to do, um, normally we do the water cycle bag. We take this at this point and we put some water in the bag and we seal it up and we put it in a sunny window. And it takes some time because what we're waiting to see is some condensation kind of in the upper part of the bag and the liquid stays in the bottom. What I want to do is kind of move that along quicker so I'm going to make a cool spot and I'm going to do that by putting some ice in a separate bag. So I'm going to take some ice and fill my bag. And maybe you make an observation what's on the outside of my jar. Kind of hold that there for a second. All right, guys, now I'm gonna take the air out of this bag. Make sure it's all nice and sealed tight. Make sure your bag is dry in case your fingers got wet. Now, all the ice is inside the bag. 
and this is our cool spot. So it's going to represent the cool spot in the atmosphere. We're going to take some tape and we're going to tape the bag and secure the bag really well inside of our larger bag. So open this up and put our cool spot right about where the clouds are there. Make sure you don't get the tape in the zipper. So if you get caught in the zipper, our water cycle is not going to seal well. All right, guys, I'm gonna make sure this is nice and secure. Press down, make sure we got good contact. That looks pretty good, okay? So now I have my cool spot right where the clouds are there. Okay, now I need to add my water. Now I did add some food coloring, some blue food coloring to about half a cup of water, and I warmed it up. Now when I place it in the bag, I'm gonna be careful to not pour it directly on the ice. So I'm gonna put my measuring cup the whole way down in the bottom, keep the ice bag away from it, carefully pour it, take it out, and we're going to leave a little bit of air in there and we are going to seal it up. Now, if you'd like to try this without the ice spot, that would be the normal way we make our water cycle in the bag. Um, you can try that too and compare. So I'm gonna try to put this down without getting our water in contact with our ice. So now we're gonna take all this, we're gonna place it in a sunny spot in the window and we're gonna see what happens. Make a prediction about what you're going to see on the outside of our little ice bag in there and eventually what you might see um, falling from that bag. Okay, let's go take a look. All right guys, so I've taped it up. I've secured it to my window. I found a nice sunny spot for today and um, we're gonna come back to it and um, see what we observe. All right guys, so we've come back to check our water cycle in a bag and let's go inside of our bag and take a closer look at our cool spot that we put in there and we're starting to see a lot of condensation already. Eventually that's gonna fall and become our precipitation. So keep an eye on your bag and let's see how it goes. Thanks for being with us.